Welcome to my life. I'm John Ochens, and welcome to the continuing saga of my <laughs> boss and our hero here at Oxford Community Television, Bill Service. <laughs> John. I, I, I really don't mean to joke about that because you've had a wonderful life and had a lot of things that few of us get to, to touch on in our lives. But what we, were, what we were talking about before you was when you were just hired by Roy Disney. Right. Right. in Lexington, uh -huh. Kentucky, right. to kind of clean up a mess that somebody else had left there as far as a television station goes. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Now, that is, a, that is a, a UHF market. So it was uh, Channel 18, Channel 27. Ours was like 62. So it was a big cranker to get up the, a noddle to get up to Channel 62. And like I said, the transmitter was dying. The antenna was brinking. It, it was a horrible situation. They had to had about 42, 43 people to the whole studio, which is not very good for that kind of a station, a market size, like 79th in the country, which is pretty good. So Mr. Disney kicked the million dollars real quick, which we had to do, put the transmitter in, put the antenna up. Then we started started cooking a little bit, a little bit better. Um, you had to make a lot of personnel changes too, we, didn't you? Fortunately, the, the promotion manager, he retired, and I brought in a gentleman from, from Florida. John came up, was a brilliant guy. Uh, we moved a production manager who was a director, Craig Cornwell, said, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be a production manager. I don't want to do it. Yes, you are. Put in there as production manager. He's the most creative guy I've ever seen other than Terry Styles. <laughs> the, the, the sales manager had to get another sales manager too. We brought him from Alabama and his name was, guess what, Bubba. <laughs> he a, he a, we're, we're thinking of the PGA right yeah, now. Yeah, he, he did a great job. So we brought some new people in for news, uh, Kenny Rice. Uh, who came from Eastern Kentucky, brought up with the studio and brought some new people up. And all of a sudden, we were potentially do a million dollars less for the first year. We brought even the first year. Second year, we got a couple million dollars in advance to Mr. Disney. So all of a sudden, we were rock and rolling pretty good. Then all of a sudden, the promotion manager, John, said, as I'm walking down the hallway, he said, hey, big guy. They always called him the big guy. Yeah, well, what do you need? Well, I got an idea. This is in August. Okay, what's the meeting going to be? Kentucky has no Christmas parade anywhere in Louisville or here in Lexington. Why don't we have it? Have you lost your mind? Well, I got 43 there, people in here. There was no Christmas parade parade in the entire the state, state of, of Kentucky. Kentucky. That I know of, no. Well, I brought my department heads in, all of my department, sales manager, my production manager, and all the people together. And we chatted about the production manager, the production manager, Craig Cornwell, who said, I don't want to do anything. Well, you know. We can bring about 20 kids from Eastern Kentucky as our grips to pull stuff around like that. I think we can do this. I said, holy cow. Let's go, kids. Let's go. For that, by done, we, we had the floats had to come in somewhere else. Call Mr. Disney once again. Potential, we might need some more money unless we don't sell it, which we did. That's why I played a lot of golf with the Pepsi people. <laughs> and the other, it's a hard job. You know, but job somebody to do had these to do things. it. So anyway, floats came in. Everybody came in. And the... The Grand Marshal of the first parade of Lexington's Happy Chandler was the second time governor of, of Kentucky. The most remarkable, wonderful man I've ever seen in my life. He was the, the first baseball commissioner, but the first Blake person in the pros for baseball. He, he gave me more accolades of himself than he would for anybody else. When he would sing Rupp Arena at the at arena in uh, Lexington, Kentucky for basketball, he would play Kentucky, the song, People were crying. He's such a gorgeous, gorgeous man. We loved him so much. So he was our first you know, person of the parade. The parade was incredibly great. So it went day after day after day or year after after year. How many years did you put? I mean, this isn't, wasn't a one-shot deal. No, we did eight years. Eight, eight years, years of Christmas. Eight years. And then, then In a state that had none before. None for ever. You can watch now. I think uh, Russell, our, our editor, will show us a little bit of that parade and what the view where people lied up. On the, on the parking lot, tier leers of people geared up, to, of uh, people watching the parade. It's outstanding fun. Uh, we did the, the one in 1988, the last one was uh, the first woman governor in Kentucky. Oh, that, well, by the way, I got to be a, a Kentucky colonel. You did? I did. I got a couple things I've got <laughs> when I was in Lexington. Well, congratulations. Being fun, being fun, being happy Chandler and all the governors going as the, uh, the Grand Marshal and stuff like that. I got to be the colonel. Kentucky Colonel, then I went to Hazard. They had some problems down there uh, with the station to do some things. So I got key from the Hazard. The key of, well, you of have Hazard, all kinds Kentucky. of awards. Oh, another one, yeah, that was a great one. You're a Duke of Hazard. 
the great people though. <laughs> great, great people down but, there. But you know, the, the sad part about the <laughs> uh, the Christmas parade is that after eight years and after you were there, it quit. It was no more. Yeah, it quit. They wouldn't quit. But let me get back. Let me get back to some more fun stuff. Okay. More fun stuff. When I got in for a couple of years into there, um, had some problems with my first wife. So I'm separate by a single guy that time. So. I was snooping around with uh, Bruce Todd, my good friend at that time, uh, at the Pepsi-Cola place. We kept around with him a little bit, hustling for golf and play for the parades and getting money for that. He said, uh, you got to go to the racetrack, the uh, Red Mile standard break races. And I have no idea what they're talking about. So I went to the Red Mile and we watched these horses, pacers and trotters and stuff. <clears throat> Pretty much fun. Pretty liked that a little bit. So we went to the stable, visited with the trainer. And uh, Larry Noggles was our trainer. And I just said, well, how much do these horses cost? He said, well, you can get a piece of one. You know, I got a trotter up here in Michigan. You would not believe how he can trade as a yearling. A hundred miles an hour. Oh, I can, this is great. How much is it? It was getting I, in your blood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, here comes some money. You know, I got 10%. I'm ready. So about three months later, they call up and said, ah, your horse, the trotter, yeah, he can go hundred miles an hour, but he wouldn't turn left. So <laughs> when it went to the Amish, but anyway, so now I'm into the blood now. Now I've got it, so I got to find a horse. Now I got something good to, to, what they can do it. So Larry Nago, my horse said, our trainer said, there's an old Missy mirror called Miss Gypsy Wit. She played some races up in um, Cincinnati. It's for sale, it cost her X amount of dollars. I said, wow, that's kind of money. So I checked with my promotion manager, creator guy that brought the, the, the Christmas parade. So he kicked me into percent. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So I met a financial girl. Think of it as a mutual fund. I'll find the group. So I met a financial girl and said, give me 10% of that. She kicked in for 10%. I'm a little short. I need like $10,000 more. You know? So guess who I called? Mr. Roy. Yeah. <laughs> I asked for his money man, Stan Gold. And I said, Stan. Uh, Appropriate name for a money same man. Same thing. If you go back to, go back to the uh, Mellow and the Duck race we had. Same deal. Tent about 10 minutes <laughs> presentation about getting a horse and Neva called it Shamrock Stables versus Shamrock Brosting, which they had, right? He liked that part too. So all it takes is like ten thousand dollars to get your peep, your parts of her. Big pause. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. So we got Miss Gypsy. When I got Miss Gypsy on and raced. And I got stuff of a picture of uh, Miss Gypsy for uh, Russell to show to us. And all Russell showed a little bit of that race. Through the stretch, Miss Gypsy Witt is beginning to close now. On the outside, BJ's reply, by far the best, the late move from Zarovich. Miss Gypsy Witt is hanging tough again. Miss Gypsy Witt's going to win it. When I first started once again, a couple years into it, I, I, I got my own little farm with Bruce and I, at least myself a farm for Bruce Todd and myself to Silver Cloud uh, stables. Did, did you actually live on the farm? You and I did, your family? Yeah, we, did I did you? a farm there. Yep. Okay. Silver Cloud. <clears throat> and uh, Kenny Rice worked for ESPN part time with my station. So he was in our idea to do an uh, interview about me and the, our stable. I said, cool. So and by did. the way, Kenny Rice is still doing that. Still works at NBC. Sure does. So once again, if you would, Russell, play that little deal about ESPN. That stands Niatros and Sansam is a major breeding establishment, but the big farms, although the most familiar, are not necessarily the rural in horse breeding. There are small farms owned and operated by people that are not yet major figures in the industry. Here's Kenny Rice with a report. Bill Service is a white collar, upper middle class guy who grew up on a farm in Michigan. This vice president of Shamrock Broadcasting is general manager of the company's Lexington television station. When service came to the bluegrass in 1980, it presented him with the opportunity to get back to the farmland and to horses. And when he wants to relax, he takes off the tie, puts on the cap, and comes here to his 20-acre Silver Cloud farm, located a dozen miles south of Lexington. Bill Service is one of a growing number of owners of small standard bred farms. Four years ago, Service and his friend, advertising executive Bruce Todd, bought their first horse. Service now owns all or part of six racers. His prize is Miss Gypsy Witt, a five-year-old mare. Before, it was a tax write-off. Uh, a friend of mine got me into it, and I bought one horse that's never hit the track. And uh, the more I hang around the horse people, the better I like them, the more I got involved. So now it's, uh, it's a business hobby. When you talk about a farm owner, as you are right now, people have a connotation that everybody is a millionaire and everybody makes a lot of money and has a lot of money to spend on these horses. You're not a millionaire, are you, and have a lot of money to spend on these horses? I'd like to meet one to help me pay for this debt. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, the money is, is important, but we're losing money right now. 
but we expect to turn around pretty soon. Larry Noggle, my farm manager, brings us horses. We've got quite a few boarders now, and it's picking up speed as, as people get to know what type of uh, farm this is. It's a good one with a good horseman as a farm manager. I just piddle. You know, I'm, he allows me to groom and rake the aisle in the barn, things like that, and uh, count to the head out in the field, but he does the important stuff. I can get on my tractor and bush hog if I want to, and, and I think about television because that's my, my main job. Uh, but it relaxes me. I need that type of relaxation. There are 12 boarders now at Silver Cloud Farm. Service and trainer Noggle have plans for bigger things at the small farm, though, in Nicholasville. We'd like to have a stud standing here, and I'd like to see Silver Cloud turn a profit. And uh, the more I make at Silver Cloud, since it's a business hobby, the more I put back into the business, because I believe in the standard bread business. And uh, again, it's good people, and I'm uh, wanting to get into the future of it. In Nicholasville, Kentucky, I'm Kenny Rice for Down the Stretch. So there you go. There's Silver Cloud. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fascinating. Oh, it was fascinating. Now, there's, there's one or two other interesting things you did oh. while working for Mr. Disney, as I recall. We had big trouble trying to get basketball because Kentucky Wildcats is the most important thing in the world for that city, that area, or Kentucky. So the CBS affiliation was tied in for the Wildcats forever. Could not get them in. Could not get in for any reason to get, uh, get on the air. So... Uh, I finally got a two to the, the, the university to, to buy for the rights for the Christmas Hawaiian rights and Hawaii Christmas uh, tournament. That cost a little bit of money. That's a two satellite hop from uh, Hawaii to LA to Lexington. But I brought my production manager and my announcer, Kenny Rice, and another basketball coach with us to go up to Hawaii to do a 30-minute program of uh, pregame uh, of the basketball game. And then Kenny and the basketball out did the game. So I've got some, some pictures of uh, Kenny Rice and uh, my production manager and my other crew that we hired from uh, Hawaii to do those basketball games. You ever go, you go to Hawaii and you can have a remote? When we go to go election or here, we're going here. We get, you get, if you're lucky, you get a Subway sandwich to something. You go to Hawaii for a basketball game, they got a remote truck over here with a buffet from everywhere and the food for they lunch. They knew how to treat you oh, right. Like, absolutely. So anyway, we did the basketball game. It was, it was, it was an incredibly uh, exciting thing for me. We spent a lot of money for Mr. Disney. He's very happy about that, too. So when we came back from Hawaii, we stopped at L.A. to visit with him. Because Chris, uh, I'm like production manager myself, we have produced the Disney family to continue on. We want to show that that would continue uh, the Disney situation. So uh, we visited with uh, Mr. Disney in his patio in the backyard. I have to back up a little bit, I'm sorry. Uh, we had to work about eight or nine minutes to do the rights of the Disney Corporation to do the rights of the original Disney uh, programs that we did, the okay. cartoons that we did, that Walt really did, and mm -hmm. stuff along there. So anyway, we got all the rights for that finally. So I visit with Roy in the backyard with his patty, patty is, his wife, and listening to Patio, and, and pretty fun things like Patty would say to uh, Roy, who's that young man behind him? Who is that anyhow? Um, now I can't remember. One of the Happy Nate guys. There's all the directors in the world right now. Ron Howard? Yeah, that's Ron, Ron Howard. Ron Howard. Is that young boy behind him? Yeah, Ron Howard, that's who he is. You know? yeah. And uh, Bob Hope was around the corner, another, another star around him with him was there too. So anyway... We went to the Disney. I can tell this was a lower class neighborhood. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Was so, this around the time that Disney World opened, uh, Disasneyland opened up as that, well? That was already open. He was considering moving to uh, Disney World in, in, in uh, Paris. But anyway, we went to the Disney Corporation at Disney Studios to visit with Disney, Mr. Disney and his office and toured a little bit around there. And you can watch again. Russell will show me some uh, viewing of touring around the studios from Disney, like the Mickey Mouse Road and Pluto Road and all those kind of things like that. Cool things about that program. It's now, didn't the you fifth, fifth, I'm sorry, the 15 years of my life between Chattanooga and Lexington, the most incredible lives of my life. And here now, coming to here at this, in Augusta, Georgia, here, I'm sorry, in Oxford, this is a new chapter for me. I'm very excited about the 15 years over there now I have another chapter for I'm very happy about these, these troops that we have in this, this station creating for this village and this township. There you go. All right. <laughs> but would you like to talk some more about uh, the Disney days, though? Yes, Because sure. uh, there was some other stuff that went on back then, wasn't there? Uh, you put together a promotion 
about Disneyland and the opening, I believe. Um, no, I didn't do that kind of stuff. Um, the parade, the Disney parade. And no, that was that was our parade. That was here. Oh, that was this here. Yeah, Mr. Disney. Whenever we need something to do here. By the way, when he first came in here, we, we had the station was once a dirt once again, but we were. He was so happy to come in to help us do anything we wanted to. We brought him into uh, an, a reporter, Susan White, I believe it was, from the Lex from the Lexington uh, newspaper, came into my office and listened to her and Pat, Patsy and uh, myself, listening stuff that I didn't know. You know, Roy Disney won a Academy Award nomination twice for out in the that. woods for two years watching wolves. I didn't know that. I didn't either. No. I didn't know that at all. What an incredible guy. Roy, Roy, Walt Disney was the art guy, and his brother uh, was Roy Sr., was a financial dude. But Roy Jr., my guy, was a real technical guy on broadcasting and stuff like that. There's so many things that we talked about on the program. The second half of the one-hour Disney continues. The first 30 minutes was the cartoons. The first is Mr. Disney, what he's continuing on, mm -hmm. which he did. Um, we talked about the stuff of uh, Walt and Roy had, had a few they had in time in this and some other information. I wish you could watch the program. It's, it's a really, really good program about that. Okay, so for, for 15 years, you worked for Mr. Disney. Well, ten, 10 for him and five for the other place in Chattanooga. Okay. And you really enjoyed your life doing this. Terrific. Then, I mean, we're talking about a period of time here where... Uh, I believe you were a vice president. Correct. Yeah. You uh, had other people driving you to the office every day. <laughs> Nobody drove me. No. But you occasionally flew around the country visiting did do that. other stations and evaluating them. Did that. Right. Okay. Right. And what happened to end all that? Then Mr. Disney said it. I said he bought he bought it for like thirteen or fourteen million, and he sold it after ten years for thirty six or thirty seven million dollars. So he he sold it. When so, any company, it's kind of like. Um, it's kind of like a sports team when they fire the coach and yeah, they're good. No, all the just, underlings no coaches go with come them. in. Yeah, so I yeah. went to Augusta, Georgia. So I went to Augusta, Georgia, and uh, worked with CBS affiliate down there, and it was pretty tough down there. The only good thing about that is going to the Masters or National. That was a CBS affiliation, so I got to do played at the National a couple of times. Really? Number ninety-two was my best score. Number ninety-two. 92. <laughs> so, so after about two years there with a bad, bad owner, I didn't like him at all. It's a lot of screamer and a lot of stuff like that. So I had a small heart attack. So after a couple of days with a heart attack, I went out, thought about it, called over to him, and he said, oh, Bill, congratulations. You backed, backed up? I said, well, actually, no, I'm firing you. He said, what? He said, I'm firing you. You're trying to kill me. So I got out of that. So, so that was it at the Augusta station. Augusta station. So I started my own advertising agency and a, and a little restaurant at that time. The he said flippantly, I started my own advertising <laughs> agency and a restaurant at that time. Really? Yeah. So, uh, Heartthrob Cafe, that was a tough one. My son was a chef. Your son was involved with that. How I had old a was very, he at the time? Then I had a creative uh, young lady, a graphics lady and bright lady, um, to help start a new advertising agency. So, service advertising, naturally, agency. So, I fired my first uh, client was Southern Siding. And so, once again, Russell, you can watch about a, about a minute or so that commercial that we did. What a deal. Save one half off the regular price on vinyl. From the CSRA's number one home improvement company, Southern Siding and Window. If you own a mostly brick home and all you really wanted was a super sale on overhangs and gables, well, now's the time to save while materials last. Call right now and save one half off the regular price on super polymer vinyl for your overhangs. Call 1-800-43-VINYL and save today. The Southern Siding Way. That's the Southern Way. Okay, Russell, that was it. That was my advertising agency for one of the things I did for Southern Sightings. And <laughs> we need to pick up on that, but there was one thing I think we missed when we were talking about the Disney days. Oh, oh one little thing, didn't I? The That's Iris right. Award. A, Nile, a Nappy Iris Award. That's, um, I, you know, I hired somebody here, the young people, and I just got a national award one time, blah, 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 and Bob Hope gave me the award, and I said, who? But at this time, <laughs> it was pretty exciting to me. The I Was Done in New Orleans for Disney continues, the movie, a one-hour program. Uh, it was a national award award in New Orleans. Bob Hope did me my award. So it was pretty, pretty important at that time. So you were standing on the stage next to Bob With, with Little Hope. Hope. Yep, yeah. Couldn't much better than that. Boy, I guess not. Yeah. Anyway. All right. 
Now we're back back, back to, to the, the advertising States. agency. So then I picked up another another um, Southern States was that one advertising. The other one was Forrest Kate Ford, which was the Southeast Ford Advertising Agency. So I had a couple other agency people and clients for that time too. So service advertising agent did pretty darn good for a year or so. But then an NBC affiliation guy said, if you really really get back to TV again as, as a less pressure job than as a general manager, there's a local position, a local manager job to do that job. And so that I, was where? In Augusta, Georgia, once again. So we took that job as Augusta a local sales manager and retired from the advertising agency job. Then my wife got sick after about a, a year or so. I had a little stroke. She had a breast cancer, breast cancer. Got a little suck with her, sick with her, and she had a stem cell transplant. We had to pull that off. That was a little scaring about her and us. That, but that wasn't, let's not brush over that. That, I mean, that was more than a little stem cell transplant. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Uh, yeah. It cost a bazillion dollars that you haven't, to do, if you haven't got the half nodes of cancer nodes. You didn't qualify for the insurance. Exactly but, right. But fortunately, you were in a financial position. At that where, time. That's correct. Yeah. Where, you could, where, you, where you could help her that, out. You're correct. And how did that go? Well, we thought it was great. We thought it was, we thought we don't have to worry about it. We moved anyhow to Olive Branch, Mississippi, uh, to get close to her parents. Okay. Just in case. Uh, so she was a school teacher, so she worked in Olive Branch High School. And I went as an RV rental machine um, um, manager in Olive Branch. Then she started bones, started hurting again, which means we're in trouble for cancer. So I canceled for the RV job. So basically, you guys were trying to get by until this health situation yeah, was, she was resolved. she was such a girl. So anyway, I worked as a part-time um, uh, school teacher, part-time person. Yes. To help with that. When she passed away, uh, my, my daughter said, you need to come back up here and take care of these grandkids. Right. So at that time, you had a daughter in Michigan. Yep. And she actually had lived most of her life with, with her mother. Is that correct? Well, no, not really. She moved me, and then she got married uh, in Florida somewhere. She... With the first woman, worst wife, she had some problems with uh, bipolar and stuff like that. So she kind of separated totally with her <clears throat> and my son, too. So my son lived in Chattanooga and my daughter lived in Lake Orion. She told me to get back here and take these grandkids, which she did. And okay. I came up here. So I parted here as this little station here as part time and would sell as a, uh, as a salesperson at Walton Wood Retirement for a year or so, part time, too. And then we got a little more better in here. Terry Styles forced me into our community access for the eight years ago. <laughs> Have you been to any horse races? Huh? Have you been to any horse races? Have, I did once here. I did. Yes, I did. So this kept on moving on. Then I had uh, the second manager again, again for a year ago was, was not pretty good for the, for the station either. So uh, told, asked, told the cable commission, I've been in the business for 50 years. I, I'm going to be the, let me be the manager and take care of this place and let these kids have some fun. Let's get some more work at, a, at uh, Oxford and have some more fun and do some more creative things to do around this nice, useful, niceful things in Augusta Township and Addison Township, which we do okay. right now. What do you find interesting and different about the community television scene as compared to the professional television scene? The, the total difference is local. Totally, total local, 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 and how much we can do, how much we're going to do a uh, 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 fashion show for somewhere, or we're going to go to, uh, uh, like Terry and the Dark Community Access, going to Winterside, Winterfield, whatever it was over here, uh, or how many people are doing a pottering somewhere, or how much is doing for uh, anything, anything interesting that Terry and I are going to be interested for, anything you're doing for my life, for this program. What a great program. Thank you. Or Susan Bork, you're hosting with her for uh, Let's Take a Walk. Yes. We've seen every store around Oxford, a township. It's never been done at this, this duty before. And for the major stations can't do that. You can't go to the major stations. You've got to go big time. You've got to go big time. We do everything local, everything local, which is great. And look at these kids around here. Look at you. You came here in August of this year? When was Look it? at this kid. Look at this yeah, kid August over here. August of last year. Look at Russell. He was working somewhere in, uh, close here, about 10 miles from here. Found out he could edit. Russell, he's a really, really good guy. Look at Kyle, Michigan State University. Another Andy comes in here. Is another Michigan State once again. Another Jeff came in for three or four stations in, in, around Michigan area, places like that. These are incredibly, incredibly talented young people in Oxford. Be happy that you have. They are great, great kids. 
If you had it all to do over again. Never. Do it again. Do it again. Exactly the same. There's another chapter in my life right now. <laughs> we love you, Bill. I love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Everybody, I'm Terry Styles. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Service, and I'm the producer of our community access. Terry and I started our show eight years ago to bring our community into your living rooms. Our community access is a show born from the rich diversity of our community, and we want to brag about it and the people creating that diversity. Over the year, we've been from fox hunts to beekeeping and right in your own backyard. And we welcome new businesses, chamber fashion, senior hobbies class reunions, and much, much more. We've covered all our celebrations from Leonard Strawberry Festival to our premier Lone Ranger Parade. But there's still more avenues that we plan on going on. So watch our community access at 9.30 and 5.30 every day, and you have a great, great week. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard.